It's time for The Local with your host and realtor, Katie McKinney. Welcome to The Local. Hey guys, it's Katie. I'm excited to have Allie, the Allie Hamilton on the podcast today. Allie, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me on the other side of the camera this time. <laughs> <laughs> She's thrilled. Is this the first podcast that you've been on? For first podcast I've been on, not the first one I've recorded, but oh, very, just on the other side. Just on the other side. Well, uh, I'm happy to have you here today. Thanks for having me. Of course. So, Allie, I know, but where are you from and how did you get to Woodward? So, it's kind of a long story, but... I grew up in Canyon, Texas, which is right outside of Amarillo most of my life, and then uh, moved to Canadian, Texas, where we met um, my sophomore year of high school, and then went to high school there, graduated, went to Oklahoma State University, where I uh, majored in strategic communications, and then met my husband and got married (laughs) and moved to Colorado Springs and lived there for a little while, and then Uh, My husband actually got a job here with Oklahoma Farm Bureau at the Woodward office, and that's how we ended up here. Just moved here in May, so still relatively new to the area. Neat. What did you, you said you studied strategic communication at OSU. Yes. What was your job in um, Colorado Springs? So my job in Colorado Springs, that was my first job out of college, I guess my first job in the professional world. I was the marketing and communications coordinator for an advertising agency. So basically, I uh, maintained and developed relationships with clients, Mm -hmm. companies, and helped develop marketing and different creative strategies for their brand um, and kind of project management, worked with all the departments, our copywriters, graphic designer, uh, web development, kind of was an overseer of a lot of different things, jack of many trades, like (laughs) I am now. Yeah, I was going to say, it goes well now as well, so that's neat. What was your favorite part about that job? What was your what was the favorite thing you to do there? I think my favorite part, just like my favorite part of my job is now, is kind of developing those relationships with clients mm-hmm. and just really focusing on uh, meeting their needs and listening to their goals and trying to strategize and think mm-hmm. of creative ways of how to attain those mm-hmm. um, in a in a fast time frame, like yeah. just like selling a house <laughs> <laughs> strategic marketing quickly <laughs> that's neat that's neat so um what is the difference you think like a big difference between uh, your job in Colorado Springs to now you know obviously you weren't in real estate before no and <laughs> did you know anything about real estate no. before <laughs> I would say there's probably actually a lot more similarities yeah. between my job than there are differences however it is a different industry and you're yeah. selling Houses, you're working with individuals, you're not working with these large corporation or companies selling a product, you're working with, you know, a family and selling their home. So I would say it's a lot more personal. Yeah. Um, And it's kind of more, I would say, it's more intense because it's a lot of times this is the roof over people's heads. I mean, it's a huge investment for most people. Mm -hmm. It's the largest investment most people will ever make. So them trusting that with you, that's a huge, um, huge responsibility. responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. So, so working with each, each house is each property is different. The people and their motivation to sell or buy is different. And I just really love, you know, hearing their story and making sure I can, uh, create the best marketing strategy for their house or Mm -hmm. making sure I'm staying in tight communication with them throughout like the under contract process if they're a buyer. Mm -hmm. Um, But just making sure that um, I'm doing everything I can to make, you know, sometimes a stressful process smoother. Yeah. Most times stressful. Yeah. (laughs) I think uh, within within the first month of Allie and I working together, she said, is it always this fast? Is it always this stressful? It's like a roller coaster. And, you know, it's, it's not, you know, some people say, well, I could sell my home or buy a home without the help of a real estate agent. And you can, Mm -hmm. but we try to take a lot of that stress and, um, kind of anticipation on closings and, you know, uh, specifically stress yeah. um, when there's there's issues that uh, that go on. And we try to take a little bit that of that off of the buyer or seller. And, you know, whether that's being a counselor 
um, which we are counselors quite often. To each other. To each other also. <laughs> Clients and each other. <laughs> and each other. Um, or, you know, just trying to help with the process. So, I mean, you're you're definitely, that's, that's right. But it doesn't really slow down, does it? No. And I think um, coming from, I mean, when I first moved here, Katie was actually my real estate agent before she was my employer. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I moved here and... I, we were looking for houses and I really had no idea about the real estate process at all. And it's funny to be on that end and to see all that, you know, Katie did for me and now to be on the other side and I'm doing that for other clients. I really makes you appreciate it um, a lot more when you kind of, I was able to see both sides, both sides of things and Mm -hmm. um, uh, just truly how uneducated people can be and how uneducated I was about the real estate process before Um, actually buying our first home here in Woodward Mm -hmm. and then, you know, getting my license and um, going through all that education process. And it really is a whole nother world. (laughs) (laughs) It it definitely is. I would never do it without a realtor. Looking back, I I couldn't imagine going through that process and not um, having someone, I guess, like me Mm -hmm. now um, assisting and coordinating. And there's just a lot of odds and ends that have to be taken care of Mm -hmm. and um, finely tuned before mm-hmm. you can be at the closing table. Yeah, I saw a Facebook post, which if you don't <laughs> usually need to go on Facebook to look at any comments when it comes to real estate at times, but one said a uh, suggestion. It said just post your house on Facebook on like a you know marketplace whatever, and you'll get it sold then. And you know it took every bit of me to say it's not just po- posting it online. Um, and hoping that somebody, you know, is pre-approved and ready to purchase your home when you show it to them, even if they, even if you get a showing on your property, which is great if you're a for sale by owner, great. But how do you know if that person's pre-approved? And then how do you know if they're going to have the knowledge to get to the closing table? Mm -hmm. If they have nobody helping them, there's really not a lot of guarantee that that's going to happen, um, in my opinion. So, um, it's a lot more than that. Yeah. And just like any other professional service, I think that, and and when I was learning at the beginning of starting this new career, I always wanted to know, is this how it always is? Mm-hmm. Is this black and white? I wanted things to be, you know, it's always done this way or it's never done this way. And it's not like that at all in real estate. You know, Katie would always say, you know, it's every property's different. Every buyer's different. Every seller's different. Everything yeah. is situational. And just like you'd want a lawyer advising mm-hmm. you throughout, you know, uh, a, process, a, pr- yeah. a legal process like yeah. that, I think it's just so valuable to have someone that is in the industry and is in it every day advising you throughout those decisions because there are so many situations where, you know, one wrong signature or one, mm-hmm. one wrong um, choice could affect, you know, the entire transaction yeah. and it could fall through or um, anything like that. So I just think that unless you... Uh, or in it, are in day. it every day. Yeah. It's just so hard to know if you're making the right decision. And mm-hmm. I just, I, I appreciate um, real estate and people that are in real estate so mm-hmm. much more being on this side. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's really important. And you guys were living out of state when you purchased oh, yeah. your home. So <laughs> we were doing everything electronically for the most part, mm-hmm. other than a showing or two. And um, I mean, it was, it was one of those situations where it would be very difficult to not have someone. Um, and I needed, you know, I had Callie, which she's awesome mm-hmm. still is um i got to see we her today yeah <laughs> we love you callie <laughs> and your kids Allie specifically loves your kids um but uh you know i had her and she was just so much so much help through that process and now obviously i have you as well and so it's um it's definitely taken a lot of burden off me to have to remember not necessarily a burden but just a lot of different things to remember because there are so many different steps there's over a hundred steps when you're buying and selling a property mm-hmm. um, most of the time more than a hundred I would bet, I would bet. Um, and so some <laughs> of those steps. yeah <laughs> sub steps so a lot of those you know Ally does and um, that's what I obviously really appreciate appreciate about you so I thank you for that (laughs) um we talked a little bit you know I said you know this one person posted on Facebook hey just post it on online and you'll sell it just like that (laughs) um why do you think analytics and communication are really like the most important thing when representing someone when they're um you know trying to 
uh, sell their home. Yeah. Well, I think it's just like anything else. If you set a goal and you have no way of measuring it, mm-hmm. how are you going to know if you attain that goal? Right. So in the 21st century, we have all of this technology available to us as as people in the real estate industry. Mm-hmm. And if you're not, if you have a realtor or if you're not, if you're trying to sell your home um, for sell by owner or whatever you, wherever you're at in the real estate process, if you are entrusting someone to sell your home and you're not seeing results and they're not, you know, talking to you on a regular basis and updating you on, you know, what kind of engagement is my home getting? You start to, to worry just like yeah. you would anyone else. I yeah. mean, it's a professional service and, um, I, that's what I love providing clients. They love, we get, we send out, you know, bi-weekly updates and letting them know marketing, you know, updates. marketing updates, yeah, yeah. Uh, letting them know what kind of engagement their property is getting, uh, across many platforms all online, which is great about the digital age. You can see how many times people clicked a link or viewed your property or mm-hmm. commented or engaged or viewed the photo. I mean, there's so much data to be had, but most time the everyday person doesn't know how to read that or mm-hmm. know what that means for them. Yeah. So I'm able to take that, create a report, um, and let people know, you know, how is their property doing compared to others online? And, mm-hmm. you know, what does that mean for you know, say potential buyers. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. And yeah, I mean, if you're just hoping you're putting it online, hoping it gets to a few people, there's really no way of knowing, you know, Mm -hmm. um, are these posts doing well? Are they not doing well? Am I posting at all? Mm Because there's a lot of times uh, a property may not even get online. You know, Mm -hmm. maybe it's on the multiple listing service through an automatic feed that goes on Zillow and Realtor.com and, you know, platforms like that. But um, they may not may may not be posting anywhere mm-hmm. else, um, which we have a website, um, a high powered website, I believe. And it has, <laughs> Allie's been, she's worked on it a lot of times. Uh, <laughs> she, she's uh, the, the person, the customer uh, care person on the other end. Yeah. They're like, wow, <laughs> she's really engaging on the customer care and service. So <laughs> making alterations. <laughs> yeah. Always back there. So I think that, I mean, just, making sure that you have someone uh, that's representing you that's utilizing all those tools that are out there because uh, in in this day and age, people are seeing properties online before they're seeing a sign in the yard. They're not just going to aimlessly drive around the whole area to wait and yeah. try to find some houses. They're looking online. So we, I, I take a lot of pride in creating a, like a custom marketing plan for each of our sellers and mm-hmm. making sure that their property is you know, aimed at the correct audience. Mm -hmm. It showed in the best light, the, the highlights of it are featured Mm -hmm. and it's not just, um, posted once and Mm -hmm. and done. It's, you have to create, um, a marketing plan that makes sure that your seller is getting what they deserve Mm -hmm. out of, out of your payment. Yeah, exactly. You're charging for that service. (laughs) And if you're, if all you're doing is putting a sign in the yard in 2020, um, and maybe putting it on Facebook once, um, I mean, that is, I feel like a disservice. So I'm, I'm very lucky and blessed to have you as the marketing uh, coordinator, among other things, of course. <laughs> um, and she helps with the transactions also. We won't get into that a whole lot. But I think the marketing is the biggest thing. Obviously, that's your background, mm-hmm. but you do a lot more than that. Um, yep. But with that marketing background, there's so much that, you know, when I um, interviewed Allie, uh, when we were thinking about, uh, you know, becoming what we are. Uh, <laughs> um, I asked her, I'm like, what are some of the cool projects you've done? She was like, do you know how to do a commercial on Spotify or something like that? I was like, I have, I didn't even know you could do that. And so she's brought a brand new perspective to my business and to our customers. And so um, I think it's really neat. I, I really appreciate everything that you bring um, to to Northwest Oklahoma. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, what are a few of your favorite things about Northwest Oklahoma? Well, as a new resident, I I was a Texan and now I'm an Okie, so I'm kind Toki, of getting as Toki. Bailey says. Yeah, Bailey says. <laughs> um, so I'm getting used to it. Uh, my husband's tried and true Oklahoman, so I think he really is happy we're back in the area and. I I love Northwest Oklahoma because I mean, obviously I went to Oklahoma State, mm-hmm. so there are a lot of that community here. There's mm-hmm. a lot of OSU alumni, and mm-hmm. I love that. Um, but I think it's just 
the tight knit community. Mm-hmm. Uh, my husband, like I said, works for Oklahoma Farm Bureau as an insurance, and I'm in real estate. So we always joke that it's kind of funny. We we seems like we work with all the same people, and yeah. we're always meeting <laughs> the same people. Oh, have you met so and so yet? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, I met him last week. So uh-huh. it seems like we've really gotten to know the community very quickly, mm-hmm. um, which has made it feel like home. Mm-hmm. It feels like we've been here for a long time. Yeah, we it does. Really, we haven't even been here for a year yet. Yeah. Um, so I just, I've loved that being able to get, uh, connected so quickly and develop, uh, friendships and relationships pretty, pretty quickly, mm-hmm. uh, where as if we would have moved to an urban area, it probably would have taken a lot longer to develop yeah. those friendships. Mm-hmm. And I think in Northwest Oklahoma, there's a lot of opportunity to be had and, um, a lot of, I guess a lot of opportunity to be had. And there's a lot of young people mm-hmm. that are actually moving back to the area, wanting to help grow it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I love that kind of enthusiasm and entrepreneurship and being able to partner with other young professionals yeah. and, and help the community grow. Yeah. Yeah. I love that too. That's one thing when I moved here, I didn't realize, you know, I didn't know anyone and I, I got to meet a lot of people quickly and everyone that I met for the most part were just very enthusiastic about the future and about growth and people moving back here and Mm -hmm. I think it's it's what you make it and so I think we're both kind of examples of when you move somewhere I think they say bloom where you're planted Planted. (laughs) yeah and I feel like that I feel like we uh you know you've taken that by the horns and you're able to grow and meet a bunch of people through church uh and through um just the community involvement. Mm-hmm. So is there anything you want to add, Miss Ali? <laughs> I don't know. I just, uh, it's fun to be on this side of things. And I, it's, this podcast has been a really fun project for both of us to kind of learn. We just kind of knew we wanted to do something like a, a show and it's kind of been neat to, to start something new. And I just, I kind of encourage everyone to continue to grow your business and whatever that may be your goals for 2020 you're not alone you can do it and and just take that first step and and start something new and yeah I think this is a good example yeah it it sure is (laughs) neither of us really knew what we were getting into and it's been a lot of fun it has thanks for being here Allie thank you Thank you.